Hello, it's Belinda. I'm back today to share my third and final layout as guest designer for the Mini Kit Monday Challenge group for January. I have saved what I think is the best for last and today I'm making a double page spread just documenting some of my adventure travel that I've done. So I'm showing you here what I've done to prepare off screen. I've taken, I've, I'm using hexagons which was on the bingo card and I've taken my photos and I've cut them down into hexagons and I've hand stitched around the edges. I have also trimmed down a whole heap of the pattern papers that I had in my mini kit into hexagons and I've done those different shapes because I'm going to layer them up. I've got this large chipboard title which I think came in a pack of five from Dear Lizzie and I've had it in my stash for a while and I did put it in my kit because I had this idea for this layout but I didn't want it to be white I wanted it to pop off a little bit so I'm using this absolutely gorgeous Liquitex gold acrylic paint to paint over that chipboard and it comes out so nicely. And then because I wanted to add some more gold elements that matched the title, I also grabbed out some wood veneer pieces from my little stash and I've painted those with that same gold acrylic. I will show you later on in the video a bit of a close up of the title, but it's so shimmery and it's so pretty and I'm really, this is a brand new purchase, this paint, and I really, really love it. So my background, I had two pieces of this ombre pink stripe pattern paper from Heidi Swap and I've decided to use this for my background. These mini kit layouts have been a little bit of a departure for me because I am more of a fan of the white uh, background papers but I'm using pattern papers this time around which has been quite a nice change I think. So with each of these photos I'm adding some foam dots, they're fairly low foam dots to the back of them. Initially my thought, behind, thought process behind doing that was because the stitching adds a little bit of bulk behind the photos. So those foam uh, dots just help them to work around the stitching but it also gives it a little bit of dimension without adding too much dimension. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going through and I'm going to adhere each of my photos onto a backing piece. Not all of the photos will get a backing piece. The largest photos are just going to go on their own because those are the largest hexagons that I have or that I'm using for the layout. And I'm just laying out my title to make sure I'm happy with where it's going to go. I'm using these old, very, 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 very old, I think they're from Cosmo Cricut, and they are chipboard alphas. And they're really pretty, but they have absolutely no adhesive left on them. Like, they just will not stick at all so I'm definitely going to have to glue those down but I'm really happy to make use of them. One thing I loved about that alpha set and I don't see it anymore is that it came with two extra sets of the vowels and most commonly used letters which I thought was a really really great thing to include and I wish that more alphas included things like that. But what I'm doing now is I'm going and I'm laying out all my layered stacks of hexagons. So you can see I've just tried to mix up the patterns so that there's not two of the same color stacked on top of each other and that the patterns are nicely distribu distributed across the layout. I did actually go and spend a little bit of time off camera figuring out how I wanted everything to be layered and where I wanted it all to sit. And I took a photo of it and so you can see my phone just down in the bottom of the screen there and I'm using that as my reference to go and put everything back down on the paper where I had planned to put it. I didn't want to waste time filming with that rather boring process to watch quite honestly. So now what I've done off camera, there's that beautiful shimmery paint. What I've done off camera is I've gone ahead and I have adhered all of those stacks of hexagons together. And in each stack, I've added some foam dots behind one layer and I've alternated what layer the foam dots have gone behind. So on one stack, there might be foam dots behind the smallest hexagon. On the next stack, it's behind the second largest. So I've just alternated it and every stack has got some dimension added to it, but it's just alternating it to give it a little bit more interest because it is, it's not a simple layout, I don't think, but it had the potential to just 
look a little bit boring unless I did something to add that extra dimension. So that's what I've done with the foam dots. And now I'm going ahead and adhering my title down with my wet glue. And I will pop some non-stick baking paper or greaseproof paper on top and then grab one of my extremely heavy uni textbooks and I pop that down on top until it's dried. And then I do come back off camera and also stick down that love of those little chipboard alphas and then I come back to it. So it's now the next day and my lighting has changed a little bit. So I apologize that it's gotten a bit darker. I'm just showing you there what I've done with my journaling. So I had put aside those two ruled or ledger type uh, hexagons, which were gonna house my journaling. And I've typed them up on my typewriter with vellum. On the main journaling spot, I just, uh, I didn't apply any adhesive. I just ran it through my sewing machine to stick it down onto that hexagon. For the smaller journaling spot that you can see up the top, which is just detailing where each of those photos was taken, I cut my journaling down into strips, ran it through my Xyron, and then I've adhered those down and then just run some stitching around the outside of the hexagon with my sewing machine. So fun fact, my initial idea for this layout was to do some machine stitching around my photos. I think I'd seen someone do something, well, I thought something similar on Instagram, but it was a massive fail. So apparently you can't sew on glossy photo paper because it sticks on the foot. So all I ended up doing was continually breaking my thread uh, because the paper just wouldn't feed through. Obviously that gloss finish is just a little bit too, there's too much friction there for it to run through underneath the foot of the sewing machine. So fun fact, I wasn't able to sew on my photos. If you've been able to sew on photos and you have a trick for it, then please, I'd love to know. It was just something that I thought I'd try, but the hand stitching looks looks pretty good. I used a really fine thread, so it was it's almost the same. So as you can see, I am popping up the journaling onto some foam. So they are going to sit a little bit higher than the other stacks, the other hexagon stacks, and that's fine. I just wanted them to pop out a little bit. So I've applied a little bit of fun foam to the back of each of those journaling spots, and I'm going to stick it down weight it down a little bit. I've used my wet glue just to make sure that it's stuck down really nice and firmly. And then I will come back in a little bit with my double-sided tape and I will stick those last two hexagons down in place onto the background of the layout. So the other thing I need to do now is I need to add some numbers to my photos so that you can, um, because I have journaled there where each of the photos was taken. I've grabbed these number stickers, these black number stickers, which came from, I think they came from an Ali Edwards December daily kit. And what I'm going to do is I've cut, I think it's about a three quarter inch circle out of vellum. And then I've also cut and the same size circle out of some leftover pink patterned paper. And I'm going to stick the number to the vellum and then stick the vellum to the patterned paper and then pop them onto each of the photos. So obviously what I'm doing right now is I'm just going and laying each of those numbers down onto the vellum circles. And then I will come back to stick them together the way that I do that, which I think you will see on camera just very briefly, is I have my fine tipped, my fine tip wet glue, and I'm just adding a tiny bit of glue behind the number and then pressing that to behind the number so it's on the vellum, and then pressing that to the patterned paper circle and holding it down nice and firmly. On a couple of them, the glue has bled through and you can see it a little bit against the back of the patterned paper, but it's not bad enough for it to be a really noticeable problem. So I'm pretty happy with it. I did think about running them through my Xyron because I found the best way to add adhesive to vellum without it showing through is with um, the Xyron to add the adhesive to the back of it, but I just couldn't be really fiddling around with it. So I just used the glue and it worked out pretty well. So you can see now I've laid the, the numbers down on the photos where I want to go. I've alternated flipped. 
use two different sides it's the same pattern paper one's got the pink stripe and the other one's got the pink sort of paint dots on it and I've alternated that throughout the six photos so there I am adding the glue pressing it down nice and firmly so that it's stuck pretty good and then I've added foam dots to the back of each of those and I'm going to come back through and very quickly just stick them down and you'll see with the placement of the numbers I've tried to alternate where the numbers actually sit on each of the photos it just again adds a little bit of interest I've also tried to make sure that I don't have the same patterns sitting right next to each other so that's the numbers down and now the fun part I'm going to get stuck into some embellishing so I went through my stash of die cuts and all my little embellishments that I have stored in containers by color and I've pulled out all kinds of bits and pieces that I think will go with this layout so anything travel related because these are all travel stories and anything that matched my color scheme so I've got a couple of darker like a dark navy blue for the passport stick the passport die cut and there's also a black die cut but other than that I've, i looked for pinks and teals and those kind of things and i've got lots of tags and tokens and tickets and all those travel related pieces of die cut ephemera and what i am intending on doing is creating a little cluster just a tiny little cluster on top of each one of those um hexagon stacks that don't have a photo on them so apologies for the back of my head once again at some point I am going to learn to be more conscious of where my head is it's just yeah hasn't happened yet so I'm bringing in some of those gold painted uh, wood veneer pieces from the start of the video that I painted and I'm making sure that I've got those spread across the two pages of the layout And I'm just trying to make sure that each little cluster is nicely balanced that you can still see little peaks of the of the hexagon behind the embellishments and that it's there's also some balance spread out across the layout so I've got these white acrylic stars which I think were in the Ali Edwards me kit that I threw into my into my mini kit and so I'm making sure that if I've got one white star on the left there I've also got another one on the right so it's just about finding some balance also my title the love of those two those alpha stickers just taking a photo of the placement before I go and glue them down so that I knew where to put things yeah as I was saying those alphas they're quite dark um, there is some darkness in my photos but I wanted to make sure that on the left hand page I added some darker die cut embellishments just to balance out that title over on the right so what you're seeing now is that um, camera wood veneer I'm just backing it with a piece of the pink striped pattern paper just so that you can't see all the way through because if you see all the way through it's a little bit distracting because it was sitting over the corner or sitting over the join of the two hexagons i loved that globe it was the perfect color for this layout and all you're going to see me do now is just go through with my wet adhesive and start to glue everything down i didn't use a lot of wet glue on these just enough to kind of hold everything down but definitely using wet glue because there's quite, there is a bit of dimension in some of these stacks and i wanted to make sure that everything's stuck down and the last thing that you're seeing here these little they were little tags and it came from a six by six paper stack that i purchased from the reject shop recently travel themed really cute little tags it's a yeah, it was a travel themed collection but the paper was very 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 thin so i'm just adhering it to some of my plain white cardstock and then trimming it down again just to give it a little bit more stability so that it doesn't fall flat once it's glued down onto the layout and then i'm grabbing my teeny tiny little 
Circle Punch, which I actually bought by accident but didn't get rid of. And I'm glad I didn't because it's perfect for a tag this size. So I've punched a teeny tiny little hole in the top of that tag. And now I'm running some of the same twine th thread that I used to run around my photos. Just running some of that same white thread through that tag just for another little bit of texture. So we're coming towards the end of the video. Now, unfortunately, I did have some more footage of the finishing touches that I put on this layout, which was going through and adding some enamel dots. And I also took a Sharpie pen and did a doodly border in black around the outside of both of those pages because I just wanted to bring in a bit more of that black and I also wanted to finish off the layout and make it look like things weren't falling off the page. I had some footage of it. But while everything was transferring to my computer, my daughter hopped on and started playing with the keyboard. And it seems that she not only deleted that footage from my computer, but she also deleted it from the memory card. So I don't unfortunately have the last bit of footage of the finishing touches. But like I said, it's just adding some enamel dots. I think I used three or four different colors of enamel dots. You can see those at the top of the screen sitting there waiting to go on. And I did the nice uh, doodly border around the outside. You'll see all of that in the close-up photos which are coming shortly. So I want to thank you very much for sticking with me. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. I have really enjoyed the challenge of creating the mini kit for the month of January and I am really grateful to have been included as a guest designer. All the details about the mini kit Monday challenge including the other ladies who participate, links to their channels and a link to the Facebook group will be in the description box below. Please do go ahead and check it out. They'll have a new challenge coming up in just a couple of days for the start of February and it's a really great way to use your stash. It's a really great way to challenge yourself to yeah, just work with what you've got. So as I said, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support that I have been shown throughout this challenge. And I hope you'll stick around to see what other videos I have coming up in the coming weeks and months. Thank you so much and have a great day.